these people slowly join. So we'll get started um, and we'll just start with an introduction. So um, a big welcome to you all and thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Charlotte Burton. I'm the marketing manager for the School of Law. So my role is to um, provide opportunities for you to find out a bit more information about studying um, your postgraduate law program um, with us at uh, Queen Mary and uh, offer opportunities like this for you to find out more and be able to ask questions as well. So I've got um, some of our academics here um, with me today who are going to run through uh, the Common Law Theory and Practice LLM, which is a new LLM that we're um, offering this coming September, which is great. Um, how the session will run, we will have um, a short presentation and then there'll be opportunity to ask questions at the end. Um, we have the Q&A and the chat function available for you. Um, please feel free to use these as the session goes on while the presentation is running. Um, we or I will monitor this and um, if there's any questions that we feel will be beneficial for everyone to hear the answer to, I will save them for the end. Um, and if there's anything very specific, I'll try and answer them as we go along. Um, we won't interrupt the presentation to ask questions because it... Um, disrupts things a little bit. So we just wait and have the whole Q&A at the end. So, but please feel free to ask questions. That's what we're here for. So hopefully provide some answers to uh, any questions or queries you might have. Um, we're not, no one here is from the admissions team. So unfortunately we can't answer anything particularly admissions related, but I know a little bit about it. So I will try and answer anything admissions related that comes in. Um, but anything that's a bit specific, I will direct them to the admissions team to answer those for you. Um, so that's me done with my introduction. Um, I will pass over to um, our lovely team of academics who will um, introduce themselves. So Max, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. And well, uh, welcome everyone, um, wherever you are. Um, I know we have regist uh, registered participants from all over the world, so I hope it's not either too late or too early, um, wherever you are. So my name is Max Delmar and um, I've been at Queen Mary since 2011. Um, just a little bit of background, um, I, I studied law in Australia and qualified there as a, as a solicitor. Um, that was the time in Australia where you could still um, uh, do your qualifications while working um, uh, not only at a firm but also at a court. So I spent a year as a judge's associate at the Supreme Court of Queensland, which was where I first got, got really interested in, in judicial reasoning. Um, and uh, after that, uh, went to study um, uh, in Scotland and Switzerland, eventually ended up uh, in Queen Mary. Um, and uh, I, work, I work in my research on, on common law reasoning and the, and the history of legal thought. I have a particular interest in uh, the Scots, uh, in, uh, in Scottish jurisprudence. Um, so that's me, uh, Roxana. Thanks, Max. Hi, everyone. Um, really wonderful to welcome you to welcome you to the session, even though we can't see you. But I'm really excited um, that you've joined us. So my name is Roxana Bano. I'm a lecturer in private international law at the law school. I joined about four years ago. Uh, I'm a little bit from everywhere. Uh, originally from Romania, did my law school in Germany, um, a master's in New York at Fordham Law School, and then a PhD at the University of Toronto. And I was first an academic in Canada and the US before joining Queen Mary four years ago. Um, so I work in private international law. Um, you'll hear a little bit about this later on. Uh, but generally, my way of thinking about private international law is at the intersection of legal history and legal theory. And, um, and I also have a keen interest in feminist jurisprudence. Um, so again, welcome all to this session. And I look forward to the discussion and to, all, to answering all your questions that you might have after this presentation. Noam, over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, as my colleague said, we, we, we are very excited about this new uh, program and, and happy to see you all. Uh, my name is uh, Noam Gur. I'm a senior lecturer at Queen Mary. Uh, I mainly uh, do my research in uh, jurisprudence, legal theory. I'm interested also in, in political theory very much. Um, and uh, to some extent, also taught law, uh, private law. I've uh, I've taught private law, and, and also I do some research in this area. Uh, before coming to Queen Mary, I was for a few years in in Oxford, uh, doing my uh, graduate degrees there and uh, teaching there. 
And I also have a background in uh, practice of a few years uh, in, in uh, practices. And you, as you can see, of course, this, this uh, program uh, is very much about the integration of uh, theory and uh, uh, practice. Uh, so, um, you know, very much uh, suits uh, our interests and, and background. Um, so uh, I'll pass over to back to Max there. Thanks very much, Nom. Uh, so as you can see, we're a very international group <laughs> and uh, um, come from all sorts of places. So if, um, uh, um, you'll be taught by faculty from all, really all over. Um, right, so to start with, and um, just tell you a bit, a bit, a bit about this program. Um, oh, there we see. Um, so uh, I don't know if you've been to, uh, to Queen Mary or indeed to London, um, but we have two campuses, one, um, one at Mile End in, in East London. Um, that's where we, um, most of us who teach in the Department of Law are based. Um, and then we have also another campus in Lincoln's Inn Fields, right in the center of London, very close to um, courts, law firms and barrister chambers. And uh, uh, your, your classes might be taught in a mix, really, of, of both of these campuses. Um, we've just mentioned that the faculty come from all over the place. I've said something about the location. Um, we'll say more about the community in a moment. So the aims um, of the program. Uh, so um, overall, uh, the aim is to, to give you an in-depth, um, multidisciplinary, contextual, critical exploration um, uh, of knowledge of the common law tradition. And um, we're very mindful that um, many of you will come from different backgrounds and have different needs and interests. And so we've designed the program in such a way um, that, um, that it's a very inclusive program um, and has multiple different paths through it. Um, uh, and, and hopefully will, um, uh, you'll find it of interest whether or not um, you're, for example, uh, keen to, to do further research um, or, you, or you're actually more interested in practicing, um, whether you know uh, you're already familiar with the common law, for example, you've done an LLB uh, in a common law jurisdiction, um, or you're not familiar with it at all, and where, whatever area of the law you're interested in. In. So we're, 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 we've, we've designed the program in that very inclusive way. So the program combines theory and practice, as Noam was alluding to before, um, and you'll see how that works at a practical level in uh, the design of the core modules especially. Um, so we'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, but um, there's, um, you know, if you want to go into the PhD, there's, you'll see that there are research um, components, uh, for example, the longer thesis in the program um, that offers you that path. Um, but if you're more interested in going into practice after this, um, uh, then you'll see that there are also, um, that the, the courses will prepare you for that too. Um, uh, I've been teaching the common law reasoning course for, for many years, and um, it's always very international. There are students from, from, from everywhere, some familiar with common law, some not. Um, and um, what goes for that course also goes for the entire program. We've designed it in such a way that, that, um, uh, that, if you're familiar with it, you'll, you might be surprised at when we go more in depth at, at some of the, um, at, at what you'll learn about the common law, but you'll also find it accessible if you know nothing about it at all. Uh, and um, we combine uh, both public and private law uh, in examples in, in our courses. And that, that's a real advantage of this program. You're not pigeonholed into either public or private law. You get to really range across, um, across both areas. Before I move on, uh, let me invite Roxana and Nom to see if they'd like to add anything to that, to that, um, to those aims of the, of the program. Thanks, Max. Um, I guess maybe I'll say a couple of words about the last two points on the slide. Um, so first of all, you know, in terms of trying to design a program that is focused on common law theory and practice, I think it's important to, to mention that this is not about eulogizing the common law. It's not about sort of setting it on a pedestal and trying to celebrate it to the core, but rather to have a program that takes it as a starting point and thinks about the common law tradition, about the theory and practice in the common law legal system uh, thoughtfully and from many different points of view. 
And we can do that, I think, because one of the most special things about Queen Mary from my point of view is that it not only has a very diverse uh, student body, but it also has a very diverse uh, cohort of faculty members. Um, as you saw, of course, just from the brief introduction of the three of us, we all come from a little bit from everywhere, which means that many of us have um, had legal training in both the common law and the civil law tradition. Uh, many of us focus uh, on researching in a transnational and comparative law uh, way. And um, in terms of the methodology that we employ, that varies significantly as well. Some focus on uh, legal history and philosophy, social legal studies, legal humanities. Um, and so we, I think we can come at a discussion about common law theory and practice from very different angles. By attending different courses presented by different faculty members, you inevitably get a multifaceted perspective on common law theory and practice because the faculty body is very diverse. And then finally, on this point about combining public and private law, as Max said, this is also quite particular in the sense that we haven't designed a program of common law theory for private law or for public law. We will have various modules focusing on both sides, but also we have modules that uh, sort of criticize even the divide between private and public law and modules that will try to pick on different aspects of private and public law and show how they combine in other areas of the law. For example, when I discuss private international law, um, I always show how the field itself combines insights from public international law, from constitutional law, and from private law. And so we try to, to, to give a kind of holistic approach to the common law theory and practice precisely by, by not being wedded to a divide between private and public law. So I'll, I'll stop there and maybe Norm can say a little bit more uh, about uh, the, the first part on the slide. Uh, thanks. So, I mean, just maybe a short, a brief word on the um, integration of, of, of uh, theory and, and practice. So if you like our philosophy or outlook behind this, this program, um, very much connects to this. Uh, the famous American judge, Justice Holmes, once said, that the life of law um, is not has not been logic, and uh, you know, in a very uh, fine uh, paraphrase, I would say it has not been only logic. Logic is part of it, um, and you know, the analytical skills of a lawyer. Um, to some extent, you bring those from your LLB programs. Uh, but uh, in order to, uh, you know, to be either a good practitioner, a successful practitioner, um, or a, uh, uh, to do advanced uh, research, uh, you need to approach uh, law uh, within its context, uh, to understand um, law in the uh, economic, uh, social, cultural, um, historical uh, uh, context uh, and and that's very much uh, you know what what we will do I mean, if, if we want to understand for example cases take take for example the recent case um, in in America in Texas about the abortion pills um, or uh, the current um, dispute between uh, Florida and and Disney world about um, you know, messages about uh, sexual uh, orientation and so on and so forth. All these cases, uh, you know, in order to get a deep insight, uh, you need to, to have both the, the analytical skills of uh, legal reasoning, but also um, to understand how they interact with the political uh, uh, context. Um, and uh, that, that is, uh, as, as you will see when we go into details um, in, in a few moments about the, about the structure and, and, the, and the program, and this, this is very much what we will be doing. Great, thanks a lot, Norm. So let me tell you then a little bit about the structure. Uh, so um, you, have, um, you have to do 180 credits um, of modules, um, uh, 
you've got 60 of those credits that are taken up by the two core uh, modules, which we'll say more about in a moment. Um, the first, in the first semester, common law uh, from theory and practice, and in the second semester, common law reasoning. Both of those are full semester core modules um, that everyone on the program will do. Uh, but then you have, I mean, we, and we've designed it in this way so that you have really uh, maximal choice um, in terms of what other courses you can do. Um, you then have 120 credits um, worth of coursework that you can choose. Um, I will sh we'll show you a list later on of the sort of optional courses that we especially recommend um, as part of the program, but you're by no means confined to that. You can choose from a very long list um, of, of optional courses um, uh, as part of the general LLM at Queen Mary. Um, uh, so you have a combination. Um, of both the core core sort of curriculum as well as uh, you know a community of students with whom you with whom you proceed throughout the program, but then an opportunity to meet many other um, staff and students from from um, the the very big community um, that we have at Queen Mary LLM students. Um, one of the other key components of this program is the thesis. Um, and this is a thesis um, that is longer than, than in other specialisms uh, or often in other LLM programs. Um, it's a 15,000 word um, uh, thesis rather than, for example, a 10,000 10, word one. Uh, and we do that because uh, we, we do want to take seriously the, 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 the research component of this program. It's, it's uh, one of the paths through it, as I mentioned earlier, is, the, is, is um, to move on to a PhD. So in in order to give some substance, concrete substance to that as a path um, and to this program as a bridge onto the PhD, you have that opportunity to really work with a supervisor on, on, a, on a more in-depth um, thesis, which you could then build on uh, for, for your PhD proposal or for, for, your, for your thesis. Um, so um, uh, that's the combination of, that's the structure um, of the thought program uh, of the thought component and the research component. And, um, and, and here is a bit more about our core modules. I mentioned that first one in semester one is common law from theory to practice, and the second one is common law reasoning. I teach the common law reasoning one, so I will talk about that in a moment, uh, but I'm going to invite first Roxana and Noam to tell you more about the, um, the first semester core module. Noam. Okay, so um, <clears throat> what the, uh, the first uh, module, uh, does is to to give you uh, uh, insight into the theoretical foundations of the common law and uh, uh, do it um, from from a number of perspectives from three main perspectives first political and legal theory second colonial studies the uh, British Empire and um, after the, the British Empire and uh, finally uh, private law um, theory and um, I, I will be doing uh, the first component, the uh, common law uh, from a political and, and legal theory perspective. Roxana will be doing the second one. Um, and uh, we will also uh, say something about the third. Um, so, so just a word about, about the first one, which I will be uh, uh, teaching. Um, this, uh, these seminars, We'll look at the, the common law um, from the perspective of, of uh, concepts like the rule of law, uh, you know, whether the operation of uh, the common law uh, is compatible with the principle of, of the rule of law, given uh, the level of unpredictability that uh, sometimes uh, common law adjudication uh, include. Um, whether, uh, for example, uh, common law adjudication is compatible with uh, democracy, with the idea of uh, democratic legitimacy, given that uh, common law judges are not democratically elected, uh, for example. <clears throat> um, whether the common law uh, provides sufficient uh, certainty for um, people uh, so that you know, it advances a social utility and, and serves economic interest. Um, now, we will look at all these questions. Uh, we will begin by uh, looking at different theories, different theories 
of adjudication, for example, legal realism, uh, legal interpretivism, legal formalism. And after we acquired these tools, we will home in on particular uh, cases and students uh, will have an opportunity to choose uh, cases, including, you know, interesting cases that uh, are currently on the news, like the ones I mentioned, um, uh, and cases in different uh, branches of, of law, whether it's uh, if you're interested in private law, uh, then it can be in, in private law or public law, uh, and apply those principles, uh, write an essay uh, on how the general principles that we studied played out, plays out in play out in the in the case they they have chosen. Um, so uh, you know we designed it to be a very um, enjoyable and interesting uh, exercise and, and beneficial. Um, okay, so I'll I'll let uh, uh, Joan, I'll let now Oksana uh, talk about uh, the second component. Sorry. Yeah, thank you, Noam. Okay, so I'll say a couple words about the second and the third uh, themes. So I will be teaching the second, uh, the theme on the common law within and beyond the British Empire, which is a sort of a new research love for me. Um, I uh, recently started a project on the colonial history of private international law, so I thought it might be helpful to bring a segment of my ar archival work into this course to consider um, the extent to which and the theories that justify the export of the common law throughout the British Empire. Of course, nowadays, when we think about the common law, we think about uh, the UK, the US and the Commonwealth, but the common law was exported to, of course, a much larger part of the world through colonialism. And so I want to discuss with you sort of three dimensions of this story. Uh, first of all, we will look at different uh, jurisprudential school of, schools of thought that try to justify the application of the common law in different parts of the empire. Uh, of course, natural law or positivism, to what extent do they offer a justification for the extension of legal authority of the common law throughout the British Empire? So that would be sort of the first theme. We take a, an in-depth look at the jurisprudential schools of thought that were being uh, used and reproduced in different parts of the empire to justify the application of the common law. Then we want to take a look at the philosophical uh, perspectives that were being put forward in the colonies. So rather than reading philosophers from the metropole, we want to take a look at the philosophers in different parts of the empire that we wouldn't normally look at or we, didn't, we don't normally read, but they were actually innovating quite a bit on the jurisprudential front in different law schools throughout the empire. So we want to, to, we want to have a look at different kinds of um, jurisprudential perspectives that were being put forward in different parts of the empire. And then thirdly, to try to um, think about what judging in different parts of the empire might have been like. Uh, to what extent was the legal training of the English judges uh, back in the metropole and their socioeconomic position uh, influencing the way in which they were judging in different parts of the empire? We will look at an interesting strand of scholarship nowadays on traveling judges. What were English judges envisioning doing when they were traveling to different parts of the empire to judge there and to apply not just the common law, but also different bodies of religious law and different customary laws. Um, so again, this, this particular theme is going to invite us to think about the way in which the common law was extended, justified and applied. Um, across a wide range of different jurisdictions throughout the British Empire. And now to the third theme, this is going to be taught by two brilliant private law theorists we have at Queen Mary, Dr. Tony Zhu and Dr. Jivan Hariharan. They will be teaching you this private law theory in the common law module, which they've uh, very brilliantly titled Method or Madness. I'm going to try to explain perhaps what they mean by this. Um, so they want to give you, they want to achieve three things, I, I would say. On the one hand, they want to introduce you to a variety of theories about the nature of private law and the aims of private law. Um, you may be familiar with the fact that there is really a wide variety of perspectives on how to understand the nature and the aims of private law. They want to travel you, they want to travel with you through that maze, uh, potentially a madness of theories about the private law. 
Um, then they want to uh, discuss with you what is particular about this kind of theoretical madness in the common law tradition, what is particular about theorizing and practicing common, um, private law in the common law tradition, and then thirdly, to take a step back with you and to interrogate uh, whether it is even possible to have a unified theory of the private law. Is it really possible to have one unified method about the private law, or should we perhaps, in a sense, embrace the madness and realize that there, there are potentially different ways of understanding the nature of private law and different ways of justifying different parts of private law in different contexts? So there was a question here. I'm going to jump in just to say a word, but we might say a little bit more about that. Uh, there was a question about whether you can, in a sense, specialize in private law. And as you will have seen already, um, we are offering a variety of discussions about common law theory and method and, and practice, which straddles the private and public law domain. But if your interest is particularly on, in, in the private law area, I hope you realize that there is also a focus that you can build for yourself in that area. So there will be one section that focuses particularly on private law. In my section in uh, on the common law within and beyond the British Empire, there will be many sections when we discuss particularly private law aspects of that export of the common law. So you can focus on that. And of course, the thesis, you can choose to focus the thesis on a private law theory aspect as well. Um, so I just wanted to say a word on that, but I'll now pass it on to Max to tell us a little bit about uh, the common law reasoning module. Great. Thanks a lot, Roxana. Whenever I hear Roxana and Norm speak about their courses, I, I, it makes me want to become a student again and take, take their seminars. Um, so, so thanks a lot, both. Um, so the common law reasoning course. So um, this is a course that introduces you uh, to the uh, techniques, uh, modes of reasoning, devices, forms of language um, that uh, both advocates use uh, when they are seeking to persuade judges, um, advocates in particular before common law courts, and um, the techniques, devices, and so on that judges use when uh, justifying uh, their decisions uh, in common law cases. Um, uh, this is a course where uh, the focus is, is on reading the cases and on thinking about what it means to read a case uh, and the different ways in which we might do that. Um, we read mainly cases um, from appellate level courts. Uh, so what used to be the House of Lords, um, uh, judicial, uh, um, the House of Lords Court, uh, judicial vision. Um, we, we might read some cases from the Privy Council um, or what is now the, um, and uh, what is now the Supreme Court. Um, uh, sometimes the courts, Court of Appeal as well. So we read um, a lot of cases, uh, but I do combine that with some uh, theoretical um, resources as well alongside, um, while also giving you extra theory to read if you wish, if you end up writing your essay on that particular topic. Um, uh, so um, a, a real focus on the practice uh, of the common law. Um, there are three themes. Um, in the first one, we look at the different ways in which we reason with cases. Um, I mean, the common law is often thought to be a, a case-based uh, system of reasoning um, and sometimes contrasted with civil law traditions as a result. That can be very misleading because cases are also important to many civil law traditions. But there is a sense in which there are some um, quite particular techniques um, that, uh, that um, are very prevalent in the common law tradition. Um, and we look at a range of them. We, we look at what is meant by analogy. Um, we look at practices of distinguishing, applying cases. Um, we, we look, of course, at models of precedent, um, the way that precedent has been understood, but, um, but also look at challenging some of those models. So for example, rather than just looking at how one past case might be said to determine a present case, we look at a whole range of ways in which cases might be related to each other, including, for example, more forward-looking projections of the legal significance of a case. You know, it's part of precedential reasoning, for example, to think about what might be the precedential value of the case that I'm deciding now for a judge? Uh, how might other cases have to be decided in the future? So a kind of future-oriented aspect of um, precedential reasoning, not just backward-oriented. Um, um, 
Um, but judges reason with cases and advocates use cases in all kinds of ways. So for example, um, uh, they, they generate extra cases, uh, hypothetical cases, and reasoning with hypothetical cases is such a really important part of what advocates and judges do. So we talk about that as well. And we talk about what it means to know an area of the law with a via a group of cases. Um, what is it to know a group of cases? Again, judges don't often think in terms of individual cases. They think in terms of groups of cases. So the question is, what does that mean? And how do we know in, in, in groups of cases? The, the, the second thing is that um, one of the, the second theme is, 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 is related to the observation that um, what's often said about, the, about common law reasoning is that it's quite fact sensitive. It's, it stays quite close to the facts. It's often quite shy um, in terms of generalizing or, or theorizing and making broad and gen statements about uh, of principle. Sometimes that's done, but a lot of the a lot of the what you find when you're reading common law cases uh, involves the description of facts, either the facts of past cases or the facts of of present of the present case, or of course the facts of uh, future hypothetical cases. And um, what we're doing in that theme is looking at description. What does it mean to describe facts? What are facts? <laughs> um, you know, what does it mean to describe them? Uh, what are the different ways in which we describe them? We frame facts. What, what is it? Why, why does the common law often at the appellate level um, allow for multiple versions of the same facts to be described? Um, that's something very, very interesting about the common law. Um, you know, in, in the common law, judges sign their own individual opinions, and we call it an opinion. Um, and um, it's interesting because there's a realm of uh, sort of role for the subjective description of facts um, that's very important in the common law. Um, a part of that is when one describes um, the persons, for example, in, 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 in the litigation before the court, um, in other words, um, uh, the question of uh, describing and evaluating character. The, the knowledge of character of persons is vital um, in legal judgment and common law reasoning is no different. So we look at what it means to judge character, evaluate character, um, uh, and uh, for example, the role of the emotions of the judge in, in evaluating character, biases, and so forth. And the third um, theme is um, a theme uh, that um, pushes against the tendency in common law reasoning to focus on the individual person reasoning. Um, the idea that reasoning is something done by an individual. Um, the idea here is to look at interactive collective dynamics of reasoning. So we look at the dialogues between judges and advocates. We read not just the, the judicial opinions, but we read the submissions and the, and, and, um, the, the, the back and forth uh, between judges and advocates um, as, um, uh, in a case. Uh, we look at um, forms of reasoning that are designed in particular to discredit the other advocate, um, reductio ad absurdum, or forms of refutational logic and rhetoric, um, where an advocate is, 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 as it were, arguing against the other advocate. Um, there's a distinct forms and techniques of reasoning there. Um, there's also a distinct skill of the advocate responding to the judge. Uh, and the judges' questions, and we look at some of those techniques, and we look at the way that judges interact with other judges. Uh, you know, there's there's all sorts of interesting questions about um, the the decorum needed for judges um, in disagreeing with each other, dissenting. You know, questions of politeness and how that's done. <laughs> um, similarly, with advocates um, uh, when they're disagreeing with certain members of the bench or with judges in past cases, um, the question of politeness and decorum, social norms. Is, is not something that's often related to questions of legal reasoning, but I think is very important. So, so we look at those interactive and collective uh, dynamics. So it's, it's a course that um, will give you an insight into the theories um, surrounding common law reasoning, but will primarily give you a, a really advanced introduction into the techniques and devices um, of persuasion, of justification, um, whether you want to be a barrister, potentially at some point a judge, <laughs> um, or uh, whether you want to, of course, research those questions uh, in a theoretical way. Right, so um, there are our um, core modules. Uh, here are some of the optional modules. Uh, these, are, these are just, um, uh, as I mentioned, the only two compulsory aspects of the course um, in terms of programs that you, the, the, taught, the taught aspect is that you, um, the, the two that we've just been describing, um, then you have a free choice for the remaining 120 credits. And 
Um, here are some courses that we've just listed that we think if you're interested in, in, in common law theory and practice, you, you know, you, you might want to do. But um, as I say, there's a huge range of choice um, for what you can take. Let me just very quickly mention, just to give you a sense of the international aspect of all of our faculty, we have certain courses, um, some of which are 15 credits or the half a semester, that are taught by visiting fac uh, faculty or faculty that is a sort of fractional. Um, so the, this course here, Law is Plural, is a course taught by um, uh, Professor Ralph Michaels, who's uh, the director of the Max Planck Institute um, uh, for Comparative and Private Law. Uh, in Hamburg, um, and the Law and Authority in a Global Context course is a course taught by a professor in Tilburg, uh, Hans Lindahl. So, um, but you know, you have so you have a you have really access not just to the faculty, permanent faculty, as it were, in at Queen Mary, but also um, courses being offered on all range of things from from visiting faculty too. Right. Um, so they're the optional courses. I mentioned that you have a mix of fifteen and and thirty credit modules. Um, here you, you see the 15 credits are five weeks and the 30 credits are a whole semester. Um, the seminars are three hours each, um, usually, and depending on the course, sometimes it's organized into a lecture and, and then tutorial, but many, most, I think, of our courses, certainly that we'll be teaching, will be three-hour seminars. Um, uh, you, most of our courses will be the ones taught in uh, semester A and B. Um, but you have a, a you have some courses that are available also in semester C. Um, a word about um, some of the opportunities beyond the curriculum. So um, one of the things that we're very very keen on is for master students to get involved in our research culture, and uh, we're a very research intensive in institution. Uh, we're part of the Russell Group of universities um, um, uh, in the UK. Um, research is is you know why we one of the main reasons why we're um, we're all academics. So we we teach and we research, and much of our research, much of our teaching is research driven. So um, uh, you have an opportunity to get involved in all kinds of research centres. Um, you can look them up on the website. Um, um, we have a new centre in climate, climate, and climate, uh, climate justice, a, a centre around immigration and refugee issues, and border centre. Um, uh, Center for Law, Democracy and Society. You, you see the Center for Law and Society in a global context, which has been running a law and Marxism series. Um, there's really a huge range. Um, and that's just in the law school. There's also um, a very much a, a thriving interdisciplinary research culture through our Institute of Humanities and Social Sciences. Um, so there's lots and lots of opportunities. You can get involved by, for example, becoming an assistant um, uh, in one of the research centers, help help um, organize some events, um, certainly certainly participate in, in the many events we have, whether they're launches of books or lectures or, or, uh, or exploratory workshops or bigger conferences. Um, the other thing that, um, that, that, that we do is um, uh, it, many of us have all kinds of connections to the legal profession. Some of you, some of us, as, as you've heard, have practiced before. Some of us retain some sort of connection to practice. A number of us, are, uh, for example, um, academic fellows of the Inns of Court. So I've been a, a, an academic fellow of the Inner Temple for many years. Um, uh, some of us um, um, practice on the side in all kinds of ways, whether as door tenants at barristers' chambers or as arbitrators or in some other form. Um, uh, and we also, um, because of our connections to the profession, um, have sometimes judges and advocates and other practitioners from, for example, from the Law Commission, um, coming and speaking um, to our students. Um, and, and we have visits that we, we do with our students. Um, as part of other courses, um, uh, we've taken uh, students to, to the Supreme Court or to the Inns of Court, and we plan to do that as well um, uh, with, um, with you <laughs> when you come, if you come. So um, uh, I'm just going to uh, see if Roxana and Norm would like to add anything to this, to this slide on, on going beyond the curriculum. Thanks, Max. I don't, I don't know if I can add anything. I mean, Max um, already described everything. Just to reiterate the fact that, of course, if you are passionate about what you're studying and you're interested in any particular aspect, every faculty member at Queen Mary will be happy to link you with whatever you need and whoever you need to, to research with in order to fulfill that kind of um, interest that you have. Um, so whether it's just researching more intensely or discussing more intensely on a particular topic with any faculty member at Queen Mary or other um, departments in at Queen Mary, because we are, of course, a campus. 
which makes the links with various departments at Queen Mary really easy. Um, so, so just to, to reiterate what Mark said, that because we are a very research intensive faculty, um, whatever passion you have for any particular aspect of your research will be more than welcomed and fostered by the faculty. Can I, can I add uh, just uh, two words? One on the uh, research centers. For those of you uh, who are thinking of going to further degrees and PhD, the research centers are also a, an excellent place to um, meet and um, engage with uh, academics, as, as Roxana mentioned, who uh, might be interested in supervising and supporting um, your uh, potential PhD um, doctorate uh, project in the future and to consult with them about possibilities and opportunities. Um, the other comment is if, if we can go back to the uh, uh, list of uh, choice modules for choice, uh, I just wanted to highlight, uh, if you see at the bottom, uh, that apart from these uh, those listed uh, that are more connected to legal theory and um, that, that you also have access, you can choose uh, any course, any module from the general uh, LLM. So there is, you know, a very high level of flexibility. If you want to pursue the, the, this program, um, our program, um, you and, and, you know, uh, have uh, a few credits that are in a different field uh, for, for in the interest of um, diversity and uh, changing a bit. Um, you have uh, a very high um, degree of flexibility uh, uh, to do that. So you can compose, you know, your, your dream, your ideal um, uh, program in a way. Um, am I, am I uh, correct about that? Do, does anyone else want to add uh, on, the, on this point? No, that's great. That's right. Thanks, Noam. Um, right. So um, uh, that's pretty much all from us. Uh, I just um, invite Charlotte to say a few words um, about this slide and the remaining slides. So thanks, Charlotte. Sure. Um, so we've actually have quite a few questions asking about after the LLM uh, in the Q&A, which we'll uh, come to after this. But I think it's always worth mentioning um, the support that we also offer as part of um, studying law with us at Queen Mary um, in terms of careers and employment opportunities. So we would say um, just as an outcome from the uh, study in postgraduate law with us, we have very high rates of employment. And um, obviously this is a new program, so we haven't got too much information about that specific to this at the moment, but we know kind of the pathways that we think uh, would be appropriate. Um, but we do have a specialist uh, careers team within the School of Law, which is fantastic that we have that resource um, for us particularly. Um, there's wider careers and events team um, at Queen Mary, but we have our own dedicated careers team for the law school which is brilliant so they can they help with um advising on a cv or interview prep um if you've got an internship interview or something coming up that you want advice on they can help with that and they also arrange um quite a number of events um with uh, law firms locally um and internationally as well to give you an opportunity to network as well so we don't um provide the opportunities such as internships for you but we provide you the opportunities to try and network to get those opportunities which is which is great um the guys here have obviously mentioned about the research institutes but we have a huge variety of them and lots of events that um take place um as part of the school of law um that you can get involved in as well some more opportunities to network um and build your kind of portfolio of interest and in thinking about what it is that you would like to go into and how you can um, explore that further um and as it says at the back uh, at the end of this slide or you can come back for a phd which is obviously an option um particularly for this as well next slide max mm -hmm. Um, and this is just an example of some of the careers events um, that that partnerships that the the team have posted. So just a, a few um, companies there, uh, which the students get an opportunity to be part of, um, and that's included in in your program um, and available for you to be 
uh, part of, uh, no additional cost or anything, you just come along, um, which is great. Um, next slide. So some things, there's been a couple of questions about this in uh, the chat, which is uh, always comes up. So this is just our entry requirements. So this is available on our website as well. So you can find this on the Common Law Theory and Practice um, program page, but we generally ask for at least a 2-1 uh, um, or above at undergraduate level in a law degree or a um, degree with substantial law content. Um, if you haven't reached that, that's OK. Um, we just ask for you to have um, substantial um, legal experience. So we ask you to go away and have had um, some legal experience to help and um, build that understanding. So we all come in on a similar level. Um, when it comes to the language skills, this is also really important. So as um, uh, has been said that we have a really international cohort, which is fantastic, but we want to make sure that everyone um, has a good understanding as well of the English language, as this will be, the programme will be taught in English. So um, we request that you have an English language test, um, either IELTS or equivalent. Um, we, the, all this is detailed on our website. Um, but we also have, um, if you haven't quite met the requirements for the IELTS, uh, for example, we do offer pre-sessional English as well, which a lot of students take part um, in getting involved in, which is great. Next slide, please, Max. Um, and this is just a final slide to just show you some kind of key contact details. So um, Anne Flanagan is the director of the whole LLM program. Um, so um, you can contact her, but she will be very busy because she has like a, a lot of programs to look after. Um, but the School of Law Postgraduate Law Office, um, that email address is manned by my team as well as the law, law office. So if you've got any queries, please feel free to get in touch with us and we will try to redirect you um, if we can't answer the question ourselves. Um, but we're also on social media as well. So please feel free to come and um, have a follow on there and see what's going on. We do regular updates all the time about what's happening across the School of Law, which is great. OK, that's the end of our presentation. Um, there's been quite a few questions in the chat, which I've kind of held back on, which I thought we can try and answer. Um, one of them, the first one that I held was about thesis and being related to common law. Um, would anyone be able to answer that? I would uh, so it would is, be. <laughs> is, the, is the question whether the thesis must be related to the common law? Is that the question? It says, will the thesis be related to common law as well? Look, we're very flexible on thesis topics. Um, I think that it's, you know, the way we're approaching the common law um, in the first place is, is that, you know, it's by no means, for example, only an English tradition. It's something that we're approaching very globally um, uh, um, and, 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 and certainly also not, in, not, not, um, uh, not only in, in the present, but historically as well, which which really, uh, and so it's a very, very flexible and broad interpretation um, of the common law. So um, the chances uh, are that uh, pretty much anything that you'd want to do in the thesis, um, you'd be able to, you'd be able to do. Um, don't know if, if uh, Roxana or Noam would like to come in on that. Just to fully agree. <laughs> Especially on the flexibility. I'm, I, I couldn't imagine not being able to find uh, a topic in this broad understanding of the common law. Lovely. Thank you. Um, one for me to answer, which always comes up, which I'm answering for the benefit of everyone, is about scholarships. So we have a huge range of scholarships that are available for studying um, postgraduate law at Queen Mary. Um, there is a scholarships database, as I call it, on our website, which you can have a look through to see if there's anything suitable for you. And you can filter by um, school, by masters, and even by country that you're from. So to see if there's anything specific for you. Um, I will put the link to that in the chat. Um, so if anyone wants to um, have a look through there, please feel free. Um, depending on the time of year, as we're quite late in the cycle, so quite a few of them have closed now, unfortunately. But there are um, others that are open much later. Um, and some of them depend on um, kind of grades, academic achievement in your undergraduate, for example. But there's no harm in having a look and seeing if there's anything suitable and if application um, is open for you to apply. If not, you can always defer to next year. Um, if there's if, if deadlines have passed, for example. So I hope that's helpful. 
Um, there's been quite a few questions about leading into employment for the next part of this. Someone has said, will this call lease to becoming a barrister? Will I be eligible to become a barrister? You guys know more about this than me. <laughs> there are specific requirements uh, that you have to go through to, to, to be, first of all, uh, to be registered as a legal practitioner in, in the UK and then to become, uh, to join the bar. Um, and it's best to look at um, the, the, the web, the relevant websites for that. So this, this isn't a degree that qualifies you to be a barrister. You have to go through the inns of courts and go through the requirements. Um, uh, but it is a course that can prepare you well for being a good barrister. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, particularly um, uh, in terms of introducing you uh, to the techniques and devices that, uh, you know, that, that you would need to employ when you're arguing in, in a court, uh, but also being aware of the many other political and, and other issues um, surrounding uh, the common law including some of the very topical cases that, um, that uh, Noel mentioned, and being aware of the imperial colonial history, for example, of the common law, which, which, is, um, which is vital as well to, to being able to, to, to really understand um, what might be some of the concerns um, facing judges when they're deciding cases. Being sensitive politically is often vital to the practice of a barrister too. I just wanted to say a word about, um, I saw a question about um, accessibility for someone from a civil law background. We've said this, but I really want to emphasize it, that um, this is very much a program that's open to, to those who may have really no background at all, no knowledge at all of the common law before. Um, I've had you mentioned many, many students in my in, in the common law reasoning course, which I've taught in, 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 in for, for, for a number of years now. Um, uh, and um, that's uh, students have, have often written about, you know, comparing, for example, um, the use of the reasonable person in the common law to devices that may be similar in the civil law tradition, or um, they've spoken about precedent in in uh, common law and Islamic law, and 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 you know, students are writing on 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 those sorts of topics, comparing and 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 um, looking at the common law from outside, from and 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 um, in relation to other traditions. Um, um, so it's it's uh, it's very much a program open to 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 those of you from civil law backgrounds. Perfect. Thank you. Um, and then there's another question just about optional modules, which I think I can probably answer. Obviously, the optional modules will be led by the uh, academic staff based on that module. So it might be uh, Max Roxana or Noam, or it could be a uh, faculty from the rest of the School of Law. So you will meet more academics um, during your time here who are specialists in those areas, which is why um, they teach on those. Um, in terms of how many optional modules you have to choose from, this depends on the size of the module. So um, if a module um, is larger and it's 30 credits, that might fill up a bigger um, chunk of your 180 credits. Or we also have 15 credit modules, which means you can choose more. So it completely depends. And it's kind of a bit of a mathematical equation you have to do yourself uh, when you choose your modules um, when it comes to uh, module selection um, in September. Um, so hopefully that helps. I see one question. Sorry, I see one uh, questions of sub, a question of substance. Uh, whether the panelists could comment um, regarding comparison bet comparisons between how common law evolves and statute law emerges in accordance with polarized political ideals. Mm. Um, I'm sure the other panelists also have may have thoughts about it, but uh, I think this is an excellent question and an excellent example exactly of the type uh, of things we will be doing. Um, um, and uh, so, so very much if, if you're interested in that, you will have the space and the opportunity to explore that both in the uh, modules, in the core modules, um, definitely in my uh, seminars, uh, and in the uh, dissertation uh, later, if you want to home in on it. So, um, and uh, more particularly, I mean, this, this question very much turns on different uh, approaches to the role of courts, to the role of, of judge, of, of a judge, which is very much, you know, had a debated uh, thing. Uh, and, you know, some, some see the judge 
as a kind of substitute legislator that whenever there is a lacuna, a legal lacuna, they can uh, fill it uh, in with uh, policy. Others think that judges should adhere very closely to the text, to the letter of the law, um, or to the um, uh, intentions of the historical intention to, of the legislators. And still others uh, think that there should be some sort of integration or synthesis between uh, you know, trying to stay close to the uh, um, uh, enact to the uh, statute, uh, fit the the historic the the institutional history, but also uh, provide a, a legal outcome that would be attractive uh, from a political and moral. Um, so some sort of synthesis. So as you can see, there are different approaches. Uh, to this, and that's exactly uh, what we will try to uh, figure out to, to form our view on this and to apply to apply it to specific uh, cases, specific disputes. Thank you, Noah. Um, so we're going to wrap it up there. I'm just going to finish on this very quick question that we can answer. Um, as someone has asked, are the professors accessible so we can ask some questions during the course? And I think I can easily answer to say yes. <laughs> um, everyone is always available on email. Um, and also, obviously, you'll see them in your lectures and tutorials, so you can um, speak to them very easily. And people, yes, are available by email, so we don't hide away, I'm sure. <laughs> OK, so we're going to wrap it up there. Um, I have put in the chat the email address if you want to get in touch, if we haven't been able to answer your questions today. Um, so please do get in touch and we will get back to you as soon as we can. Um, and just to say a really big thank you to Max, Roxana and Noam for your time today um, in talking us through about common law theory and practice. Um, the programme is open for application. So if you are interested, um, please do make an application and uh, we hope to see some of you in September. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, and we'll close it off now. Hope to see you in London. <laughs> Hope to see you soon and thank you for organizing, Charlotte. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.